Welcome to the Contractor Success Forum. Today we are understanding the basics of surety bonding. On the Contractor Success Forum, we discuss financial strategies for running a more profitable, successful construction business. And we have with us Wade Carpenter, Carpenter and Company CPAs, and Stephen Brown, McDaniel Whitley Bonding and Insurance Agency. And we have Rob Williams, me, your profit strategist with Iron Gate Entrepreneurial Support Systems. So how do we understand the basics of surety bonding, Stephen? What do we need to know? Well, you need to know what they are and uh, where to get them and how you get them, right? Yeah, what are they? Gosh, is there any other know. basics? Well, bonding, first of all, bonding is something that you're required to do when you're bidding on municipal or government projects. Sometimes a private owner will require a bond. Sometimes as a subcontractor, you'll have to bond back to a general contractor. There's lots of different bonds, but a bond basically guarantees you're going to do what you say you're going to do. So the basics of bonding is understanding what a bond is, why you need them, Okay, that's enough about that. The next thing is how to get them and what markets are out there to provide these bonds to contractors. I mean, Rob, I bonded you. How did you feel when you were thinking about getting your first bonds? Oh, I was so intimidated. I, I felt so unworthy. I didn't know what it was. It's the locker room beer talk with the contractors. They sound how hard it is and how they got to keep all this cash over somewhere and all this perfect credit and you got to just be perfect this and all this experience and you got to have backlog and all these things. And with all that talk, I just didn't think they just intimidated me about that. I don't know. Well, why yeah, you toughened me. up and you called me. So I'm proud of you. I don't know if I tell you, you know, I don't even remember how that started, <laughs> but I mean, I guess, cause I knew you, I guess it was probably over a beer somewhere. I don't know where we, how we started the conversation, but, well, but you, I you made me not think it was so hard. And I, I think part of it is that I had to get those. I should have done it a long time before that, but it, the economy switching, I had to fill up the factory. I had all kinds of downtime, so I was forced to buck up and get a little bravery in there. Talk well, about it. Uh, you did a great job. I never had any problems with you, buddy. Getting that first bond can be kind of intimidating. And Yes, yeah, very Okay, so you go and you Google online and you see all kind of things pop up. Guarantee we get your bond to you in 30 minutes. Well, the next thing you know, you put in your email address and uh, they've asked you for everything because bonding is a financial guarantee. You're asking a bond company to guarantee you're going to finish a project. So do you want to put all that personal information into your computer with the company that you don't know? I say, no, find a bond agent, find a good bond agent. That's what yeah. I do for a living. I'm a matchmaker. I find the right company for you and your bonds. And then the first thing I got to do is kind of figure out where you are to see what's the best company to get your bond through. There's simple ways to get bonds. There's credit scoring bonds. We can move pretty quickly if you have a good personal credit report and credit scoring for your company. And then there's SBA back bonds. It's amazing the things you can work out in tough situations, up to $6 million with an SBA bond program. And then eventually, as you start implementing the things that we keep coaching and talking about on the Contractor Success Forum, you're getting bonds easily and you're dictating the rate you're getting and you're getting the amount of bonding you need. And it's not stressful at all because you're supplying those bond underwriters a great product, you, and you look fantastic on paper. And you don't look good on paper unless you have a good construction-oriented CPA like <laughs> Wade Carpenter. You're Wade, so what have you seen? Well, I, I know I've seen a lot of things. I know there's a lot of confusion sometimes about just the basics. Can you explain to our listeners what's the difference in a bid bond versus a performance bond? You know, what are the different types of bonds? Could you okay. go into that a little bit? Sure. Bid bonds are required for you to bid a job, and they're usually 5%. On federal jobs, it's 20%. Every now and then, you'll see a 10% bid bond request, but that's a bid bond that you have to get from a bonding agent, from a bonding company, and you have to get it to turn in with your bid. And it used to be in the old days, the bid bonds just simply guaranteed that 
if they had to rebid that job because you pulled off the job, that it would pay up to 5% of your bid amount to rebid that job. And now a bid bond pretty much guarantees that if you're the low bidder, you're going to be able to get what's called a performance and payment bond. And it's really two separate bonds, but there's one charge for it, performance payment. So that's what you have to get if you're low bidder on the job and you're awarded the project. So at McDaniel Whitley, we don't charge for bid bonds. But if you're low bidder, there's a performance and payment bond. And the rate that you pay for that bond, we get a commission on that. So when you're successful, we're successful. You know, one question, confusion that I had on the bonds is when you go to a bonded job, you're talking about the performance and the payment. Now, on the payment side, what does that guarantee? Does that mean that every time, if you bid a job, that you're going to get paid on time every time by all these people that you may not know that you're bidding? That was one of our big things is we're going to bid bonds because we didn't know who these people were that we were bidding these jobs to. Sometimes well, it kind of came back on us. <laughs> payment bond means you are going to pay all your materials. Yeah, see, bond. we didn't quite understand that. We thought that meant we were going to get paid <laughs> when we went in there. But if you're working as a subcontractor to a general contractor and not being paid, then you're offered protection under their payment bond. Yeah. And, and, and I guess some of those things is with these out-of-town guys, well, sometimes we really had to look at that. This, that could be another subject, but yeah, we ended up one year getting paid. So it, it didn't mean that they were a great person if you get some out-of-town person on a job. So anyway, that was a big confusion I had when I did start the bonds. We're talking about some of my fears. Some of my fears were getting the jobs that we bid. <laughs> that, that was one of my biggest fears. I'd win a job. It's like, what job is this? Who bid this? And what the heck is that job? Are we going to get paid? I don't know who these people are. Right. Well, greasing the wheels toward moving projects to completion, financing is part of it. Bonds are risk financing. You can buy an insurance policy. That's another form of risk control. But that's what I do. So finding a bond for you as a bond agent is what I do for a living. I remember just thinking about this. If there was just some way that I could have had one resource to know about what bonds were, like maybe in 60 to 100 pages, if somebody would just write a book about that, they Steve. would, that'd be great. I mean, that oh, would be the most, I, I feel like wait, I wait, wait, wait. something. What? What? Guys, I just finished the contractor's bonding playbook. What? No, yeah, right? yeah. impossible. That's the yeah. answer to all our questions. <laughs> well, you know, it fears. started with one of my contractors who's an engineer and yeah. he wanted to know the rules. What are the rules? I want to play this game. I want to know what the rules are. And so I wrote this book from a contractor's perspective. There's lots of books explaining what a bond is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there for bond underwriters on how to analyze whether you're writing a good contractor or not. And I used to be a bond underwriter, and we were trained in how to look at those underwriters. And I've been playing this bonding game for a long time. And uh, all the fundamentals are still there. It changes, though, about what companies have different appetites. But basically, everybody underwrites on the three C's, cash, character, and capacity. Do you have the cash to finance the job until you get paid? Do you have the capacity to do the project? Do you have the ability and capacity? And then character, do you do what you say you're going to do? And all that is measured by these bond underwriters. And your head coach is your bonding agent. So feel free to call me if you have any questions or need to get a bond. Also, you're in a situation where your bonding underwriter, your current bonding company is pulling back and not giving you the feedback that you need. We always say good contractors. I, I tell underwriters all the time, you don't get a good contractor right off the bat unless there's a little hair on something. <laughs> you know, <it's>, right. <laughs> yeah. So that's what they have to do. They have to come up with creative solutions. And you'd be amazed at what can be done out there for you. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, it does remind me the creative solutions. That is kind of how I came to you because I thought I was not as strong as I had been previously. That's one of the reasons why I was so nervous because I didn't come to you for bid bondings until we, we were in a decline. And I think that was one reason why I was so 
nervous about that thing but our history y'all did look so much on the history i don't really know what you looked at but i guess that was one reason why i was nervous because i know we were going down i don't even know if we were profitable that year but we had a long history of profits because we had well rob and i go to church together i knew about your character yeah and he bonded me in what's your capacity (laughs) (laughs) but two of those three c's i already knew Stephen, I, I see somewhat here exactly what Rob, some, some contractors are afraid to even go down the road. But I also have these other ones that they go and bid a job, never having bonded anything. And then they call me in a panic. Oh, I got this job. Now I got to figure out how to get a bond. And so they're in panic mode. From your perspective, what do they do? I mean, I know what I counsel people to do. First time I pick up a contractor, especially if they're new, is like, do you do bonded jobs? And if you don't now, do you ever plan to? Should you maybe start doing a reviewed financial statement year one just so that you have some financial history? So can you talk to some people about developing a relationship before with a bond agent? Right. You know, that you heard that expression that if you have to look in the yellow pages for a good attorney, it's too late. Yellow pages, Google. Okay. There's no such thing as yellow pages. I'm showing them. <laughs> <laughs> I just talked to somebody yesterday that's canceling his yellow pages thing in a profit first meeting. I'm like, yeah, I guess you could cancel yellow pages. I, I didn't know they even existed anymore. <laughs> well, my point is develop those relationships, find a bond underwriter. If you need a bond underwriter, you can call me. I'll be happy to talk to you. You can reach me at McDaniel Whitley Agency and just look me up, call me on the phone. But the main thing is, like you said, Wade, you've got someone that's bid a job and they're requiring a bond. So did you bid the cost of the, the price of that bond in anywhere from, from one to three, three and a half percent, depending on the market? Is the cost of the bond. And then the second thing is, do you have cash character and capacity? And Wade, you as a CPA have to help get me some information that shows that you've got that. What about the projects you've done in the past? Have they been profitable? Do you have any cash in the bank? We talk about cash being king, but it's important. And then also your character. Do you have a good track record? Is this job that you need a bond for right down your alley and why? That's something you need to tell your bond agent. And then your bond agent communicates that as they find a good market for you. I mean, even if I was a Yenta trying to find one of y'all a mate, I would have to know about you a before Yenta. I went and sold you to women to say, hey, Rob's a great catch, which your wife knows already. But, yeah. but you have to know a little bit about you. So don't be afraid to talk and develop a relationship. Talk to bond agents. If you don't like them or they're brushing you off, if they don't ever want you to meet with the bond underwriter, they're not your agent. You want an agent that'll take the time to listen and find, and hear your story. And hopefully, if they're convinced that it's a good story and that there'll be a happy ending of that story as the job is being completed by you and all uh, materials and supplies are paid and subs are paid, that's what you do every day. So just getting a bond is nothing to be mm-hmm. scared of. I would like to encourage those people that you've heard from your buddies or somebody like me, I was working for bonded people, some big bonded people. Don't listen to what they're telling you. Just get the real facts, have a conversation. I I think one of the big things that I've even learned on this podcast that I didn't realize is all the factors that it's a lot of working capital versus cash. I, I don't, think I quite understood that because I had, I thought it was really bad that I had all these receivables in in inventory. I didn't, I think when I talked to you, Stephen, I probably didn't have as much cash as I had had in the back, but I had tons of inventory and I had tons of receivables, those kind of things, but I was having to manage them, which in the years earlier, I was not having to manage that, but that's actually, I was probably very normal. And where I was beforehand was probably abnormal because we had sold our company and and I thought everybody was in that position. So when I became normal, which was very stressful for me, that's probably what most of the people look like. So there's something in there. Forget the head trash. Just call and find out where you are. Talk to somebody. And I don't know whether you can, Wade, they can probably talk to you, somebody like that too, and, and figure this out. It doesn't have to be the bonding agent. Yeah, anybody on your financial board of directors, which I always tell you is your construction-oriented CPA, 
your lawyer, your banker, your bonding agent, and your insurance agent. Those are your five financial board of directors members. And they're a great resource to you. And you want to get the best you can find. So if you were doing business with someone and you were financially guaranteeing them doing something, wouldn't you want to know them personally? Yeah. So there's only so much you can do with credit scores and uh, smaller projects. And when you get out of that and you have a good established surety relationship, then other surety companies want you as well. Then they offer better rates and better terms. So you got that going for you. The most important thing, guys, about the basics of surety bonding is if you have a good bonding program in place, that means all these other things that we've been preaching about are also moving in the right direction. They may not be there yet, or they may be there. But the end goal is that all these things come together, make your construction company look good, also get your bond. I'd like to go back to the being proactive, knowing somebody that is in the industry long before you need to have a bond. But the other part is when somebody's first kicking off and trying to get a bond for the first time, and they've never had job cost records, and we're supposed to create them out of thin air, it's impossible. So... I would counsel somebody, if you're starting a construction company today, or if you've been in business for five or 20 years and you don't have that stuff in place, that's the best way I can tell you to manage your company is to by managing your jobs, by managing and knowing where your costs are and not waiting until April to find out how you did for last year. Yes. (laughs) And please... Remember that that fiscal year-end financial statement that you get your construction-oriented CPA to do for your company is the number one tool. I need to get your bonds for the next year, so please try to hurry up. Here it is in January. We haven't gotten any statements in yet, Wade, but uh, they'll come trickling in February and March. But if we get the bonding underwriters their year-end statement in uh, July and August, September for the previous year. We're getting close to being dead in the water, if not already. So please do your bond agent a favor and get them those statements. Good, bad, or ugly, a good bond agent will have some idea how you're you're in look before we get Wade's statement. Right, Wade? Yep. Yeah, I know. I mean, construction CPAs know the bond agents need them in February, March. Yeah. And so... It's a great accountability for your business. When you get really busy, it's nice to have that accountability, which sort of forces you. I mean, you might look at it as a pain in the ass, but on the other hand, it's it's really good for not just getting behind because a lot of these guys delay and delay and delay and let things get months and months behind and then have to catch up, which is really stressful. But having the bonding and having these reminders helps you have a healthy business and, and keeps you from going down in there. So it's not just about reporting the numbers. It's about making the numbers be where they're going to be and giving you some accountability to stay healthy going forward and not lose track of that. And I, I know in the residential, I see a lot more of those guys because there's not much accountability and usually don't even have banking. Those guys tend to snowball when it gets busy and there's nobody there to put on the brakes or have any warning signs, things like that. So it's actually can be really healthy for your business just the fact that you're having to supply these things all right hey you know i love bonds you call me bond brown i've got a customer that calls me and i remember doing a seminar once on bonding and i I wrote up on the on the uh, chalkboard whatever you call it i said james bond brown that's my name james stephen brown yeah, most people don't know that it is James Dean. And Brown. I said, you hey, dance though. That's the question. Well, I raised the brown. I said, you can think of me as James Bond. Yeah. And they looked at me for a while, and then I erased James and I wrote Brown back, and they started nodding their heads. <laughs> I still have some friends from that seminar that call me Bond Brown. Hey, Bond Brown. <laughs> All but right. anyway, I, hey, I've been doing it all my life. I love it. Uh, I'm knocking on wood, never had a midlife crisis where I wished I was doing something else. Always something different. There's always solutions to problems. So that's the basics of surety bonding. Okay. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do this. Don't be chicken like I was chicken. So don't be afraid. Just talk to the people. They're not going to bite your head off to talk to them. <laughs> so we want to get your bonds approved or we don't get paid. 
That's right. They want to talk to you. And that's what we tell them on the Contractor Success Forum, right? <laughs> that's right. All right. right. And with us, we have Wade Carpenter, Carpenter CPAs, and we have James Bond Brown with me, Daniel Whitley, Bonding and Insurance Agency, and I'm Rob Williams, Iron Gate Entrepreneurial Support Systems, and we are the Contractor Success Forum. Come back and listen.